President Tinubu's MBO speech that the sound to obedience. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. Which of President Bola's Tinubu speeches do you think are the best and most suitable for history books? The former Lagos State Governor has delivered many memorable speeches, but it seems that the one at the MBA 63rd Annual General Conference is a speech that school children should watch and listen to, starting from now and into the future. Watching him deliver that speech, I noticed a beautifully well-crafted speech prepared for him, but he refused to read it. Instead, he went theoretically to address the issues of the cough, without flaws or shortcoming, but with accomplishments. If you ask me, I do not know of any president who has put in that kind of work and attitude into his speeches. It was one of the boldest and most audacious speeches of our time. The theme chosen for this conference, Getting It Right, Chatting the course of Nigerian nation building was deemed by the president to be exquisitely fitting and extraordinarily pertinent to the nation's contemporary state. His impassioned words resounded with urgency as opposed to question. Why, despite our abundant blessing, do we, re we may remain wanting? He urged a re evaluation of perspective, admonishing against fixating on the past grievances as the sole solution. Drawing attention to a glaring concern, he lamented the lack of sufficient electricity in countless households and industries, underscoring the profound link between electrification and poverty elevation. His conviction rang, glare poverty could not be tolerated, and he championed the resolve to eradicate it. Amid these declarations, he kindly questioned the feasibility of servicing the nation external debts with such a substantial portion of its revenue. His unvanished words warned against a perilous path of financial destruction, urging the necessity of implementing profound and transformative changes. He courageously mounted the podium. I watched his clever stagecraft and it inspired me. I am not sure the speechwriter would be happy that Mr. President did not dwell on what they toyed to produce, although it turned out to be the best, even more so without teleprompters to enable him to project a powerful speech that dissected the country's problems. I can imagine how the speech writing team struggled to put that paper together, but the president decided to go his own way and give the speech he was born to give. The speech that will endure among the anthologies of President Bola Tenenbaugh's great speeches and one that would offer future generations insight into today's Nigeria. The most famous presidential speech became the most eloquently delivered. Listen to the full speech. It is the oratory for me. Yet the president claims he wants to learn and be criticized. In humility, he extended an invitation for critic ready to rectify any wrongdoings. The cruise of his appeal was a transformation of attitude and approach to governance. Hear him, and I quote, You are learned, and I want to learn too. But people say this must be another tenable compared to tenable during the pre-electionary campaigns. I understand those poor children who taunted him during his period are stunned and dumbfounded by this singular fluent and intelligent outing of Mr. President. So I even watched it again and again. Mr. President was inspiring, motivating and captivating. The President's foresight was not confined to the present moment. He cast his gaze to the future urging all to enjoy temporary discomfort for enduring prosperity. He underscored that his pursuit was not an endeavor for self or present, but for unborn generations, an aspiration to secure the heritage. And this is already generating reactions. Someone said that the president simply played us off the track by adopting one of the 48 laws of power, appear weak and make yourself scarce. Another said, Someone must have swapped this man after he won the election or he successfully played all of us into believing age caught up with him. Either way, I will not forgive him for stressing us while he had this audacious composure. Others said, he did that on purpose to cajole some people. He understands everything perfectly. Hear this. It seems like either a master political move or a case of someone switching in post-election. Either way, his composure is quite audacious. If this man was a preacher, it is a church I want to attend every Sunday, another went religious. I wonder too, no one is even talking about his health again. Mr. President has been in Nigeria for months now. 
The one is talking about his gifts again. Mr. President is giving them back to back with an audible and correct use of words. Hear this. The president, Bola Ametunambu, present at the NBA conference is not the same one who contested the election. He might have been swapped with a Ghanaian on one of his visits to France. He went sarcastic. This is one of the most daring acts of the open air slight of hand ever witnessed by the unsuspecting intellectually Mr. President picked the pockets of the learned men, especially those following the insidious blackmail or eyes on the judiciary campaigns. He relegated his accusers and traducers to the periphery. He disarmed them. The president went on to preach a greater form of patriotism, saying that Nigerians can make Nigeria great and that we are strong enough to be self-critical. Each successive government can look upon our imperfections and decide that it is in our power to remake the nation to more closely align with the highest, with, with our highest deal. We cannot continue to lament. All hands must be on deck rather than the condemnations. Looking ahead, he encouraged resilience and determination, ensuring the belief that within each citizen lay the potential to build a formidable nation. His voice carried the weight of responsibility as he underscored the collective obligation to nurture Nigeria into greatness. The president's vision extended beyond the rhetoric to pragmatic collaboration. While admitting the possibility of errors, he pledged to avoid grievous mistakes and celebrated the presence of brilliant minds within his circle, highlighting the Arsenal General of the Federation as a sterling example. The conviction envisioned the gathering of legal luminaries as a pivotal juncture for collective action. He urged them to rise above the mundane and work cohesively as intellects committed to charting a course to national excellence. The promise he made was a testament to his commitment to lead by example, to strive with utmost dedication, and to pave the way for Nigeria's assets to greatness. The president continued with a profound call to patriotism, one that emphasizes Nigeria's transformation as a collective vendor. His words resonates with the belief that, can, that only Nigerians can shape the nation's destiny. Equipped with a strength for a self critic, he conveys the message that the successive government can acknowledge our imperfections and, in doing so, aspire to reshape the nation in alignment with our loftiest ideals. In place of lamentation, the call is for collective action, a rallying of hands to the shared task at hand. This speech, in my view, belongs to the category of remarkable orations that should find their way into the curricula of schools. It is endurance and it is enduring impact. It is a transparency significance, making it an extension rate for every child. That is the speech that disarmed the readings and set them at the periphery. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, on this note, you have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for sending in to listen. Until I come, you'll be next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.